All right, hey guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a basic assembly file project in ML Studio. And there's a couple other things I'm going to show you, uh, little nuances about assembly projects and how to add multiple files to one, stuff like that. So the first thing we need to do is open up the new project dialog. And when you first open up Atmos Studio, you you should have the start page up. And here you can just select new project. And if not, you can go to file, new, project, uh, which will be available anywhere in Atmos Studio. And then you're going to want to make sure you click on assembler and AVR assembler project. Uh, later on in the semester, when you start writing code in C, you'll want to select a C project. So, and then after you select assembler, you need to give the project a name. So this should be something meaningful like lab one, lab two, etc. Uh, I'm just going to call mine lab zero for the purpose of this video. And then you're going to want to save it uh, somewhere that you know where it's going to be. If you have a class folder, like for example, um, I made a 3744 folder, and then within this, I would have a folder specifically for labs. Okay, and that's the directory I would use for this new project dialog so that I can put each project that I create in my labs folder. So I can have lab 1, lab 2, lab 3, etc., all in the same place so that they're nice and easy to find. And then you're going to make sure that this checkbox is, is selected, create directory for solution. So what's that, what that's going to do, and I'll show you after I do this, is it's going to create a, a new folder for the project called whatever you've called the project, and it's going to put it in the directory you give it. So in my case, um, it's going to create a lab zero folder within my 3744 labs folder. Okay, so I'll click OK. And then what we need to do now is select the device that we're going to use for this project, which in this class is going to always be the ATX Mega 128A1U. So you can filter through that um, by typing any part of the name, <clears throat> and then it'll give you you know one or more results. But you always want to select the exact one that we're using, or or the project won't work. So you can double click it. And now it's going to actually create the project. So it's going to create that folder we were talking about and add all the relevant files for our microcontroller. So if I go to my desktop and I go to this the folder that I told you about, uh, and I open up Labs, now here's the new folder with the name of the project, like I said. So open up Atmos Studio again. Um, so now we have a new assembly project, um, and we can start going. So by default, Atmos Studio generates this main.asm file. And .asm is just the extension for an assembly file within Atmos Studio. Also, a very important window to have here is the Solution Explorer. Um, if you don't have it, it should be there by default, but if not, you can go to View um, and then Solution Explorer, and that'll open it up for you. And basically what this does is it, it shows you your solution and solution is just another word for project that Atmo uses. And then it'll show you all of the files that you have within your project, okay? which will also be within that folder that it created earlier. So uh, another thing I want to show you is uh, how to add another assembly file. Because you can, have, you can have multiple assembly files in one project. And in fact, that might be a better way to do it for this class because uh, a lot of the labs, you'll have multiple parts or sections. And sometimes each of those sections requires a different program. Um, so they'll be organized like lab 1A, lab 1B, you know, stuff like that. So you want to put multiple assembly files in the same lab folder for that reason. So to add another one, we'll basically right click on the name of the solution and then add new item. Make sure you select assembler file and then call it whatever you want. I'll call this lab0a.asm, and then now you can see we have two files, the one that it added by default, as well as the one we just created. So for this file, uh, what I'm going to do is go to the examples page on the website, and I'm going to select this GPIO output, just as an example for the video, and then I'm going to copy and paste all the code in there. All right, um, looks like I missed missed something <clears throat> all 
Alright, so now I've got the code copied in there, and the only thing I need to do now is I need to select which one of these ASM files I want Atmel Studio to, to run or build whenever I tell it to, because it can only do one assembly file at a time. So the, um, what that's called is the entry file, and what indicates that is this little red arrow on the icon next to them in the Solution Explorer. So to change that over to Lab0A, I need to right click on the file and choose set as entry file and you notice the red arrow indicator is moved to the lab 0a icon So now if I click build solution that's going to build and check for syntax errors and stuff like that uh, and it and it built lab 0 because I selected it as the entry file okay so now I'm going to show you a couple things that every assembly file needs in this class just so that you know where to start off. So this dot include ATX Mega blah 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 that's including the include file for this microcontroller and it's specifically for the microcontroller we're using in this class so that's why it's important to select the right device when you're creating the project. So um, after you build the project for the first time and you have to build it first or it won't show up you have now the include file in the dependencies folder here within your project and you can actually open that up in Atmel Studio and view it. So what it contains is a lot of definitions for the addresses of specific registers in the microcontroller so that you don't have to look up the address for every register. You can just use the name itself when you're writing code, which is really convenient. So make sure that include is there. And then these equates, the .equs are optional, but basically they equate a specific a value a number to a, a, a phrase that you can use in your code instead of actually typing out the number manually every time. Um, so all the, like I said all these are optional and then these lines however are not optional. So these should be the first thing you add to every single assembly file you make in this class because they're kind of crucial for um, the program to work. So basically and you'll learn more about what it's later, I'm just going to give a high level overview. But what it's doing is, instead of putting all of the main program code at address 0, it's putting it all at address 100. Okay? Because there's important things um, in program memory between addresses 0 and 100 that you don't want to overwrite, which again you'll learn about later. And then this is where you put your actual main program which is going to end up being at address 100 because of this .org here, which you'll learn about. Okay. I hope you enjoyed our video. And if you did, subscribe and like us right down here. Do it now. I'm not going to look. Maybe I'll peek. Ooh. <laughs> and if you really liked us, follow us on Twitter.